In this video, we'll be using the Little Brain board and this STM32F4 microcontroller to implement a moving average filter in real time to filter some of this barometric pressure sensor data we are getting here. The program is already running, and you can see here the red trace is the raw barometric pressure sensor data, and the green trace is the filtered data using a moving average filter. So if I lift the board up and down, this will give a change in pressure because of the change in altitude, change in height. And you can see here the results. So the green is really nice and smoothed out using our moving average filter. And I'll show you in this video how to do that. So let's get started. The little brain board you saw at the beginning was actually manufactured and assembled by JLC PCB in China. They have a special offer going on, which is $2 for one to four layer PCBs, which is pretty amazing. The little brain is a four layer PCB and you can get that starting from $2, then of course, plus assembly costs. Now, if you'd like to order this board, I actually have the files publicly available in my GitHub repository. If you go to github.com slash PMS67 and look for the Little Brain sensor board, you can find all the design files in KiCad there, as well as all the firmware I'm writing in these tutorials. Now, some parts in JLC, BCB might be out of stock, and that's why you can actually uh, use this updated version of the Little Brain, which has a, uh, another GPS sensor and a different sensors available, and that's called the Blue Fill. And for that, I have the Gerber and assembly files ready for assembly and ordering a JLC PCB. In this video, we'll be looking at the moving average filter. In particular, we'll be looking at the theory and the final software implementation on an embedded system. Here's what we'll be covering. We'll look at what they are and why we actually use these filters. Then we'll see how to calculate the filter output from input samples and the relationship the moving average filter has with FIR filters. We will also look at some of the properties of these filters, in particular the frequency response. And lastly, we will actually implement these filters in real time on an STM32 microcontroller, filtering some sensor data. The moving average filter, or MA for short, is the simplest type of digital filter. Essentially what we are doing with this filter is simply smoothing data. We don't have any strict frequency domain requirements, meaning that we don't have to cut out maybe a certain frequency or boost a certain frequency. All we are interested in is smoothing time domain data. It turns out, in fact, that the moving average filter is optimal for reducing random white noise while keeping the sharpest step response. Computing the filter's output is actually really straightforward. Since we are in discrete time, as we are implementing this on a digital system, we are working with samples. On the top right here, you can see the input of the filter is X at sample N, and the output is Y at sample N. So for a two-point moving average filter, we look at the first equation. We take the current input sample, add the previous input sample, and divide this sum by two. Similarly, we can expand this for the three-point moving average. We take the current input sample, the previous input sample, and the input sample before that, add them together, and divide by three. In general, you can write this as an endpoint moving average filter, where you typically do a summation and divide by the number of points. It turns out that the moving average filter is simply an FIR filter with a certain impulse response. This impulse response is effectively a pulse, as shown here. And at every sample of this impulse response, we have a value of 1 over m. And effectively, the area of this pulse is then equal to 1. For more information on FIR filters, you can check out a previous video I did on my channel. As an additional note, we can actually implement moving average filters recursively, which is much faster than an FIR implementation, especially for large values of M. But we won't look at that in this video. Now let's have a look at the properties of a moving average filter, in particularly the frequency response. There are two ways to obtain the frequency response. First of all, we could just take a discrete Fourier transform of the filter kernel, but let's look at how to do that by doing a Z transform of the difference equation. Now let's look at the Z transform for the two-point moving average filter as an example. I'm expecting that you know a bit about the Z-transform, but if you don't, feel free to skip over this section. We start with an initial difference equation, where you calculate the current output sample as a sim simply the sum of the current input sample and the previous input sample, and divide that by 2. Now we take the Z-transform, Y-bar and X-bar are the transform variables, and because we have a delay operator, essentially, and the Z to the minus 1 represents a delay, that's why we see this equation on the right here. Now we can rearrange for y bar over x bar, and that gives us our main transfer function for the moving average filter, the two-point moving average filter, which is over here. We still have one zero and we have one pole. Now to get the frequency response, as usual, we let z equal e to the j theta, and then using Euler's identity, cos theta plus j sine theta. From that, we can then compute the magnitude by taking the absolute value, and then finding uh, the argument, we can get the phase. 
In general, of course, we can repeat that for an endpoint moving average filter, and the form looks like this. So we have an equal number of poles and zeros, and as is typical for FIR filters, all the poles are on the origin. Now I've used the Z-transform then to give me the frequency response and used MATLAB to then plot that. As you can see here on the right, here's a plot of various moving average filters, different point lengths, and their magnitude. So starting from the right, this is a two-point moving average filter, then a three-point, then a four-point, and then a 10-point moving average filter. As you can see, as we increase M, or the number of points in the moving average filter, we get more attenuation at higher frequencies. However, the frequency domain properties of the moving average filter in general are pretty bad. We can see we have a very slow roll off and we have pretty poor stop band attenuation. So we have a lot of ripples even in the stop band. And the moving average filter isn't great in the frequency domain, but it is rather nice in the time domain. And that's something we have to be aware of. Now that we've seen a bit of the theory behind the moving average filter and that it actually is pretty much just an FIR filter with a certain type of kernel, we can reuse the FIR library from a previous video to actually do the software implementation. We will do this on an STM32 embedded system and we will filter some barometer data. So let's move over to the programming environment. I'll be reusing a lot of the code from my previous video called FIR Filter Design and Software Implementation, which you can find on my channel. And the associated libraries are also on GitHub, under github.com slash pms67 if you look for the little brain board. So I'll be skipping quite a lot of steps because I've already covered it in this video, but I hope you can still follow along. So here I am in STM32 Cube IDE where we'll be doing the development, and there's not much to it. As before, I've imported the FIRfilter.c and FIRfilter.h libraries, which we wrote in a previous FIR filter video, and these are the ones here. Now, I also wrote a driver for the SPL06, which is the barometric pressure sensor, and with that, via SPI, I can then get the raw pressure data values. In the FIRfilter.c file, you can see that there's an FIR impulse response, and this is what we need to modify to then do a moving average filter. As you can see here, I've already adjusted it to a 10-point moving average filter. That's why the filter coefficients are 1 over 10, 1 over 10, 1 over 10, and so on, 10 times, or 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 10 times. Now, if I would like to make a four-point moving average filter, I would, of course, have to change this to 1 over 4, or 0 0.25, and have four of those values in there. Then, of course, I also have to change the FIR filter length from 10 to 4, for example. But I'll keep it at 10 for now, so let me just undo all of that. And now we have a 10 point moving average filter by reusing our FIR filter headers and libraries. So that's really cool. Then of course we have to actually filter our barometric pressure sensor. So let's go over to main.c. At the top, I will declare our struct called FIR filter uh, and the bar filter moving average, just so we know what it is. As I explained in the previous video, we are using DMA to read the raw barometric pressure sensor data via SPI. And once that read is complete, it actually throws an interrupt. And in this interrupt, we're actually then going to filter the data. So I'm simply calling the FIR filter update routine, passing the struct, and passing the raw barometric pressure sensor data. In the main function, which is called at startup when the MCU boots, of course, we have to initialize the filter. The way I do that is called FIR filter init struct, and that'll set up all our buffers and arrays. The final thing I'm doing is actually logging this data, both the raw and the filtered data via USB. So in this case, every 125 milliseconds, I am logging the data via USB. Before that, I'm actually also converting the raw pressure data to actually height above my local ground. So that's why I have these calculations over here. But in essence, I'm just trying to transmit the raw and the filtered data via USB so we can plot that and see if the moving average filter is doing its thing. So now let's upload this code and see what the moving average filter is doing. So now I have the program with a moving average filter running on this little board over here. I'm using the serial oscilloscope to plot my data, which is coming via the USB port. Now the red trace is the raw barometric pressure sensor data, and the green trace is our 10-point moving average filter doing its thing, which we've implemented as an FIR filter. Now if I lift the board up and down, I'm causing a change in altitude and thus a change in pressure, and that is reflected by these curves here. So I'm slowly moving the board up, and as you can see, the moving average filter is really nice and smoothing out the curve. And as you can see, as I move the board around, it's following the trend of the barometric pressure data, but without all this high frequency noise, which is really nice. So the moving average filter is doing a really good job of giving us the low frequency information.